my dear brothers and respected elders, we begin in the name of Allah and we thank Him and praise Him and glorify Him. We seek His forgiveness and we ask Allah to enlighten our hearts with His love and love for His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to send His infinite mercy upon His beloved Prophet and to keep us all on the right path so that we can all live like Muslims and die like Muslims and rise like Muslims on the day of Qiyamah. My dear brothers, whatever we have is Allah's fazl and mercy. We all belong to Allah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We all belong to Allah and to Allah we all have to return. Allah has blessed us with this iman. Iman is a great blessing of Allah. You can't just believe because you want to believe. Allah allows people to believe. وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تُؤْمِنَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ no soul can believe without Allah's permission. Like nobody can come to this country because they want, they need visa. Uh, similarly, nobody can believe just because they want to believe or they think they want to believe. Allah allows people to believe. Allah gives hidayat. Uh, there were people sitting in Masjid and Nabawi talking amongst themselves as though by becoming Muslims, they had done Allah and His Rasul a big favor. Allah sent Jibreel to go and clarify the issue. Allah revealed verses, Islamakum. Don't do me a favor by becoming Muslims. You think you become a Muslim, you've done me a favor? Allah says, I don't need your favors. Balillahu yamunnu alaykum. If you have any decency and courtesy, and if you want to know the reality, then understand, Allah has favored you by allowing you to be Muslims. Allah gives hidayat. Wallahu yahdi man yasha'u ila siratim mustaqeem. Allah gives hidayat to those whom Allah wants. We should thank Allah that Allah has blessed us, made us in the ummah of His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah has given us iman. Iman is made of two things. La ilaha illallah. And then... <coughs> Muhammadur Rasulullah. If somebody recites million times only La ilaha illallah, but doesn't want to acknowledge Muhammadur Rasulullah, his iman will not be complete in the eyes of Allah. Now, now, in this time and age, he will not be a Muslim. To be a Muslim, you have to believe in Allah and Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, you believe in Allah the way Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says you have to believe in Allah. Uh, you can't believe in Allah as you want. Uh, you believe in Allah the way the Prophet says believe in Allah. You worship Allah the way the Prophet said worship Allah. If you worship Allah because you the way, that's the way you want, the way you feel like, sorry, that will not be accepted. Allah will only accept the ibadat which is done the way told and taught and shown by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to believe in Allah and to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we as Muslims are required to do that to recognize Rasulullah and not just recognize Rasulullah but to love Rasulullah love Allah and love Rasulullah وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ those who believe, then they love Allah profusely. Uh, not just a little bit of love, total love. Because Allah is the one who deserves really to be loved. Other people, you might love them. They might return your love, they might not. They might not even know that you love them. Uh, many a people heard about the young man who wanted to marry the princess. Uh, this young man started dishing out cards saying to his friends, I'm getting married with the princess. Good for you. <laughs> when is the big day? He said, well, half the job's done. Half is, like, I'm ready. All we've got to do is to get her ready. <laughs> ah. Sometimes you might love someone, they might not even know you love them. They might not even know you exist. <laughs> ah, but Allah, Allah knows who loves Allah. Ah, Allah knows what a ya'lamu kha'inat al-a'yuni wa ma sudur. However you see what you hide in your hearts, there's nothing you can hide from Allah. Not in your hearts, there's no place in the universe you can hide from Allah. 
So don't try and run from Allah, run towards Allah. Fafirru ilallah. Don't run from Allah, run towards Allah. And we have to believe in Allah, we have to love Allah and worship Allah. And this is haq. Haqqullahi ala al-ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shayya. Haqq of Allah upon the people, they should worship Him. And not assign any partners to Him. And so love Allah, obey Allah, worship Allah, fear Allah. Love Him as much as you can. And people can't love Allah enough. And they don't love Allah enough. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِ Oh you people, you don't value me as I ought to be valued. People think, yeah Allah exists somewhere, yeah Allah exists. Allah is with you wherever you are. هُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Oh my beloved Prophet, when people ask you about me, I am near. نَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ I'm closer to them than what they can even realize. Uh, so to love Allah, worship, worship Him as Allah ought to be worshipped. And then believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Recognize Rasulullah and love Rasulullah. Uh, لَا يُؤْمِنْ وَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى أَكُونَ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ وَالِدِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ uh, Not to just believe that there was a man, his name was Muhammad bin Abdullah. He was born in Mecca almost 1400 years ago. Yeah, Allah gave him nubuwwat. Yeah, yeah, Allah gave him nubuwwat. He started preaching. People accepted. Uh, and then he passed away and that's khalas. Uh, no, to, to know Rasulullah properly. You have to know Rasulullah. And you have to love Rasulullah. Uh, we don't know who Rasulullah is properly. We don't appreciate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah gave a special lesson to the best people in who Rasulullah is. Uh, you know when? Uh, well, before Allah created the heavens and the earths, uh, when Allah created Adam salam and Allah brought the souls together of all the people in the world, Allah said to them, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And they all said, Bala, indeed you are our Lord. From there, Allah separated special souls. Uh, you know, they have a parliamentary session, then they have a special cabinet meeting. Uh, Allah had a general our tabligh brothers, they do open ishtama for everybody. Then they have a special gathering. Purane saathiyon ka bhi jod hota hai na. Old workers, special people. Allah had a special meeting of special people. Allah was going to make prophets. And this is not in a, in a weak hadith from fazal e amal And this is from the Quran. Uh, Quran. وَيَدَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ Allah said to the prophets, I'm going to make you nabis. When I give you the book and wisdom, in other words, when I make you nabis, لَمَا أَتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٍ And then I'm going to send a special Rasul. And you, do, you know what you have to do? لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْسُرُنَّ You have to believe in him. And those who know Arabic, they will appreciate the stress in this phrase. لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ You don't have a choice. You might be Musa Kalimullah, Isa Ruhullah, Ibrahim Khalilullah, but you still have to believe in my Rasulullah, uh, in my beloved Prophet, who's Habibullah, uh, Rasulullah. bihi. You have to believe in him as well. And not just believe in him, wala tansurunna. You have to help him as well. Uh, if he comes in your presence, don't turn away, walk away, think you're a Rasul as well, you could, that's enough, good enough. That is special. But when my Rasul comes to you, لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْسُرُنَّ Who is Allah giving this lesson to? Uh, not you and me. Not in a, this is lesson is not being taught in a halaqa. Uh, some of our brothers, mashallah, they were going to Marcus on a Thursday evening. Some brothers came along, brother, it's bidah to have a halaqa on a Thursday evening. There's no evidence. Brother, I've got to learn deen somehow. Where do I learn deen? Brother, come to our halaqa. When is that? On a Sunday. Is there a dalil in the Quran and the hadith for halqa on a Sunday? No. The, conver the conversation ended, full stop. Uh -huh. This lesson is not being taught somewhere in a halaqa. This is a special halaqa of very, very special people. A uh, halaqa of the prophets. And Allah is giving the lesson. Allah is t telling them, لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْسُرُنَّ 
Even you all Nabis have to believe in my Rasul. Do you acknowledge and accept these conditions? You know, sign a contract, terms and conditions. Terms and conditions Allah put forward. When I make you Rasul, when I send my Rasul, special one, you are all Rasuls and Nabis, but when he comes, then you have to acknowledge him. And you have to assist him. Do you agree? قَالُوا وَقْرَرْنَا Ya Allah, we agree. قَالَ فَشْهَدُوا وَأَنَا مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Allah said, remain witness. I am a witness with you. فَمَنْ تَوَلَّا بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Allah said, if you turn away, whosoever turns away after this, and then he, فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Not fitting. He will be a sinner. That will be a crime. To turn away from this pledge, to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to help him, you all have to help him. So the first lesson Allah gave along with Tawheed is one of Risala. To believe in the Risalat of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The real Nabi of Allah. Khatimun Nabiyyeen, Rahmatun lil Alameen, Sayyidul Awwaleen wal Akhireen, Shafiul Mudnibeen, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Not Mirza Khadi Ani Lanatullahi alayhi. The first lesson Allah gave of his Tawheed, and not just his Tawheed, his Risalat, when you leave this world, you know what's the first question going to be? In grave? مَن رَبُّكَ Allah said, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? Allah sent us to this world to see how we live. Allah sent guidance. Allah sent Quran. And the Quran begins with Alhamdulillahi رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Ends with قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Allah wants us to know who Rabb is. Our Rabb is Allah. You know what Rabb is? A Rabb is not just a creator. A Rabb is someone who is totally in charge, who loves you, who cares for you, who looks after you, and who doesn't want anything from you. Uh, who doesn't need anything from you. Allah doesn't need our ibadat. You think, mashallah, you coming here five times a day, uh, be an imam sahab, maulana sahab, sheikh sahab, whosoever, mashallah, good for you, good for them. But Allah doesn't need anybody's ibadat. Ya ibadi, law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum kanu wa la atqa qalbi rajulim minkum ma zada fi mulki shayya. All of you become like the best person amongst you. Allah doesn't need anything. It doesn't, it doesn't do Allah any good. Uh, and if somebody thinks, oh, I'm not going to turn up, uh, perhaps Allah will lose out. Allah won't lose out anything. Uh, whosoever does anything good, does for himself. Uh, he does, Allah will reward him. Uh, Allah has revealed the truth. وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Whosoever wants to believe, so believe. Whosoever doesn't want to believe, then, be, then get ready. جَسِي كَرْنِي وَسِي بَرْنِي جو مانے تو کر کے دیکھ جنت بھی ہے جہنم بھی ہے نہ مانے تو مر کے دیکھ You think it doesn't exist? Allah, who's Allah, where's Allah? Does anybody see in Allah? Allah is there. Uh, if you want to believe, you believe. If you don't want to believe, it doesn't matter to Allah. Just let these eyes close and then you'll see. Uh, it's just because these eyes are open, people think you can see so much. What can you see? You can't see anything. Uh, you'll know. Al-haqqatu mal-haqqa wa ma adraka mal-haqqa. You think you can see? What can you see? You can't see anything. You can't see behind a wall. You don't know what's going to happen after two seconds. اگر اپنی موت سے کوئی بشر نہیں سماس و برس کا پل کی خبر نہیں a man prepares for a hundred years but he doesn't know where his next breath is coming or going اللہ اکبر what do you think you know you don't know anything so الحمدللہ رب العالمین اللہ begins his قرآن with his صفت of ربوبیت اللہ is your رب not just our رب not just رب المسلمین he's رب الناس and not just رب الناس رب العالمین He is the Rabb of Fir'aun, Namrud, Qarun, Shaddad, Haman. He is even Rabb of Shaitan. Who has created Iblis? Anybody else created Iblis? Allah has created Iblis. Allah has allowed him to leave. Allah is Rabb of everything. Rabbul Alameen. Allah is Rabbul Alameen. And then when, MashaAllah, when you begin praying, yes, then you go down, bend down. Then you say, Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. Then put your head down, Subhana. Rabbi al-Ala, so much Allah wants us to recognize who is in charge, who is our Rabb. 
And then when you leave this world, having done so much revision and practice, should be easy then, shouldn't it? <laughs> if you've done so much revision five times a day, MashaAllah, 17 rakats are obligatory, 3 rakats, wajib, 12 rakats, sunnat e daily basis, that's 32 rakats. In every rakat, uh, there is one ruku and two sajdas. Uh, in each sajda, each ruku, you say minimum, subhana rabbi al-azim, subhana rabbi al-ala, that's 9 times. 9 times 32, uh, Allahu Akbar, 270, 288. 288 times a day, every decent Muslim revises his lesson. Rabbi al-Azim, Rabbi al-Ala, my Lord is Allah. So if you're doing so much revision, it should, should come easy in the, in the grave, then shouldn't it? If you have done 288 days a day, then when you reach the grave, you should have done a lot of work. But you think it's easy? Uh, but then it won't be this tongue who speaks, which speaks. It will come, وَحُسِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ Then the tape button will be pressed. Like, you know, you buy CDs and put them in the CD player, and then you press play. <laughs> if you bought a CD of music from Mecca, it's not going to play Quran. And if you buy a Quran CD in London, it's not going to play music. If they've recorded Quran, it will play Quran, whether you play in America, whether you play in New York, Paris, Hong Kong, wherever. But if you recorded music and you go and play it in Mecca, it's not going to play Quran. Even there it will play music. Whatever you've recorded in here, that's what will play. When, when, Munke, when uh, Munkir Nakir come, they will press the play button. Then whatever's been recorded, and that will be the first question. Mar Rabbuka, who's your Lord? And then the second question will be, Man Nabiyuka, who's your Nabi? Uh, so Allah has given the lesson over there. First lesson Allah gave, who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when you go in the grave, you will need to know who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you don't know who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will have problems. Anything else is afterward. This is just the first, this is admission. You know, people apply for admission, admissions test. And that is your first admission test in the qabr. Uh, and then beyond afterwards, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Uh, so to know Rasulullah, to love Rasulullah. And you don't love anything here and there. People love only special things. <coughs> uh, things which appear good and nice. Someone done you a favor. Uh, no one's done you a more favor than Allah Rabbul Alameen. And then after Allah, you owe the most to Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, he is, he is rahmatul lil alameen. Know who is Rasulullah. People don't know Rasulullah. Uh, he, Allah is Rabbul Alameen, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Rahmatul lil Alameen. Allah is Arhamul Rahimeen, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Rahmatul lil Alameen. Khatamun Nabiyyeen, seal of all the prophets, there is no need for anyone to come anymore, no new personality is required. Uh, when Allah sent Adam alayhi salam, yeah, there was a need for Nuh alayhi salam, need for Ibrahim alayhi salam. When Musa alayhi salam came, there was another need for Harun alayhi salam, Yahya alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, Suleiman alayhi salam, and Isa alayhi salam. But when Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no need for anybody else now. There is no need for anybody else now. He is now Khatamun Nabiyyeen, Rahmatul lil alameen, Sayyidul awwaleen wal akhireen. So recognize Rasulullah. Recognize him and love him. Love him from the depths of your heart. And just like uh, even more than what you love your parents. And love your parents as well. Not that don't love your parents, love your parents. Uh, your mother and father are very special people. From the people of the world, there is no one more special for you than your mother and father. Uh, your mother and father. When you go home, just look at them with love and smile. And when you look at your mother and father and you smile, you know what reward Allah will give you? It won't just be a smile, uh, that's a hajj written in your account. Somebody said, Ya Rasulullah, well what some, if somebody looks at his parent hundred times a day, the beloved Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sadiq al said, where well, Allah will give you the reward of hundred hajj. You look at your mother and father hundred times a day, every day you get the reward of hundred times a day. So if your parents are alive, take care of them. Look at them. Be nice to them. When they say something, don't say no. 
You might say no to anybody. Say no to anybody in the world, but don't say no to your mother and father. And when they say, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا and when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went, Allahu Akbar, once he said, if my mother was alive today and I was stepping on the musalla to read my salat, and my mother said, oh Muhammad, the Prophet said, I would have left and I would have tended to my mother. I would have tended to my mother. But now how people say, oh, yes darling, yes love, whatever you say darling. <laughs> and the mother, she's waiting, people don't care. And Rasulullah said such a time will come. Ata'a ar-rajulu imaratahu wa aqqa ummahu wa adna sadiqahu wa aqsa aba. They will say, yes ma'am, whatever you say darling. And the real darling who should be the darling, she's waiting. Allahu Akbar. And nobody cares. People don't give, give a damn. My, my old woman's on my case 24-7 man. When they talk about their mother's my old woman. My old man, he don't leave me alone man. Allahu Akbar. Is that how you speak to your father? Don't worry, son. Your children, your little Muhammad and your little Abdullah Bambino, he's growing up. Don't worry. How you talk about your mother and father, you, you, it's about give and take. How you deal with them is how you'll get it back. And the wise used to say, used to teach people uh, words of wisdom. <coughs> One young man took his father onto a river. To throw him over. He selected a place and the old man said, Son, don't throw me here. Take me somewhere else. He said, Father, why? He said, That's where I threw my father. That's where I threw my father. So if you want to dump me here, get ready to come here as well. How you treat them is how you will be treated. Love Allah, love, love your parents, mother and father, love your children as well. Give, all, give them all the love you can. Uh, but love Allah and His, his Rasul more than what you even love your parents and your children. Uh, Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they, love, they deserve to be loved. Because there's no one more special than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this world. In this world and on the day of Qiyamah as well. Uh, when people will be raised on the day of Qiyamah, it will be a state of havoc. Confusion, chaos, and uh, the sun will be so close, no shade other than the shade of the arsh of Allah. People will wish we be thrown in Jahannam, but let's be dealt with. People will go to Adam alayhi salam, you are our father, first man, come and sort us out here. <laughs> do, us, do whatever you can, help us get out of here. He will say, no, not me today. Allah put me in Jannah and said, go wherever, just don't come near this tree and I had to eat. And then Allah sent me down. Not me today. Go to Nu. Nu was very good. He did Tabligh 950 years. Our Tabligh brothers, they say, brother, who's ready for four months? Nobody gets up. Then he says, who's ready for three days? Everybody puts their heads down. Nu al Islam didn't do four months or three days. 950 years. And not two and a half hours a day. Rabbi inni da'autu qawmi laylan wa nahara. Day and night Tabligh. 950 years, easy for me to say and for you to hear. But try doing it. And going even in one gush is not easy. Nuh al Islam did it 950 years, day in and day out. And then on the day of Qiyamah he will say, no, not me today. Not me. I'll go to Ibrahim, he's Khalilullah. He, did every, he was very dear to Allah. And he, people will come to Ibrahim, Ibrahim al Islam will say, no, no, not me today. Uh, try Musa, he was Kalimullah. He used to talk to Allah, perhaps he can put in a word for you today. Musa alayhi salam will say, no, not me today, no chance. And uh, there's another bloke down the road, his name is Isa Ruhullah. Uh, he, was, he was sold from Allah. Try him today. When people will come to him, he will say, no, not me today. No, I won't even, I won't even ask for my mother today, let alone you guys. And uh, he said, yeah, but I can, I can tell you, there is one man I know, he will help you. And people will say, who is that? You say, his name is Ahmad. Uh, the, another name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Rasulullah was special. Everything about him was special. His name was special. The place he was born is special. Where he lived is special. Where he's buried is special. What he said is special. What he did is special. Whoever saw him is special. Whoever he saw is special. The women he married was special. Anything Rasulullah said and did. Whatever is to do with Rasulullah, it's all special. 
Uh, his name Muhammad and Ahmad to the people known as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet said the guy who hears my name and doesn't al-bakhilu man dhukirtu indahu wa lam yusalli alayya he's a miser uh, in modern terms they say Jew he's a miser man he hears my name and doesn't even have the courtesy to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that guy is a real miser they make an appeal, brother, whatever you can, people in Gaza are dying, starving in Syria, Palestine, Somalia, East Africa, wherever, mashallah, and somebody walks in there, man, Allah has given him so much, he hasn't got the courtesy. He might be a miser as well, but the real miser is he who hears the name of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but doesn't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's a real miser. Allahu Akbar. To the people known as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but in the heavens and previous prophets, uh, he was known as Ahmad. Uh, Isa alayhi salatu was salam. One of his main mission, his main mission was to pave the way for the coming of Rasulullah. To tell his people, yeah I'm here, but there's someone special coming. Uh, all the prophets, they talked about the coming of Rasulullah. From Adam alayhi salam's time, uh, it is mentioned when Adam alayhi salam was about to die, his eldest son Shis alayhi salam, who became Nabi after him. Adam alayhi salam summoned him and asked him, you know what son, there's someone very special going to be born in your offspring. He said, father, can a son be more special than the father? He goes, you telling, you asking me about him, his ummah is so special. His ummah will be so special. He says, Allah put me in Jannah, Allah put everything in my service. Uh, but said to me, don't eat from this, this tree. And I did. And Allah admonished me in five ways. How many? Five ways. The first thing which happened was, as soon as Adam salam ate from the tree, Allah removed his clothing. He was, where, he was in Jannat, mashallah, wonderful libas. Uh, and Allah took his clothing away. Adam salam started you know, going for some leaves to cover himself. He felt haya. Haya, haya wa shu'batun min al-iman. Haya is a part of iman. The Prophet said, إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحْيِ فَسْنَا مَا شِيْتِ When you have no haya, Allah doesn't care. You can do whatever you like. جب آدمی بشرم ہو جائے, تو پھر کیا چیز باقی رہ گی? حضور نے افمان کی جب تو بشرم ہی ہو گیا, تو پھر جو مرضی کر. When you have no shame, no shame from Allah, no shame from people, then you do what you like. Uh, haya, haya is a big thing. Adam alayhi salam felt haya even in Jannah. So he took some leaves to cover himself. Allah then he says, the next thing he did was Allah, Allah sent him down to the earth. Allah, you know, like people get deported. Adam alayhi salam in modern terminology was deported from Jannat. And then Allah sent him down. Allah separated them. Third thing, Allah separated him from his wife. Adam alayhi salam came down separate. Hawa alayhi salam came down separate. And then Adam salam cried so many years. Some people say if all the tears of all the humanity are put together, Adam salam's tears will probably be more. That's how much he cried. That's how much he cried. And then he said, I cried so much, then I, Allah accepted my tawbah. And then even when Allah did accept my tawbah, Allah didn't keep it to himself. Allah let everybody know Adam did what he did in Jannat. Everybody knows what Adam alayhi salam did. He said there will come an ummah. I did this once. I made how many mistakes? One mistakes and so much happened. He said, oh son, you ask me about the Prophet. His ummah will be so special. They will sin by the day and the night. Allah won't remove their clothes. Allah won't humiliate them. Allah won't separate them from their wives. And whenever, wherever they make tawbah, Allah will accept it. They won't have to wait for years. And when they make their tawbah, nobody else will know what he's done. Uh, you do something, whatever, wherever, who knows? It's not written on your face. Many people, they boast about what they've done. Man, I've had so and so. I did this so and Don't boast about your sins. Uh, thank Allah, may repent to Allah, seek forgiveness from Allah. Allah didn't punish you there and then. If Allah wants, Allahu Akbar. You try and park your car during the day on a single yellow line. Uh, you leave it there and what happens? Wait for the traffic warden. 
Uh, you see what happens. You'll get a ticket on the spot. Uh, you jump red lights now, mashallah. In England is probably the most, uh, it's the nation with the, which is being, uh, it's observation the most. Every corner you turn to, there's a CCTV. Mashallah. Uh, you jump the red lights, and you do speeding, and a camera flashes, you'll get the ticket at home. Uh, one of my friends, I got flashed the other day, man. They sent me a fine. Don't worry, son. That's what happens. Uh, if Allah wanted, Allah could have punished you there and then, but Allah didn't, because Allah is merciful. Uh, Allah doesn't separate you from your wives. And then Allah doesn't tell other people. So when Allah is not telling other people, why are you boasting in front of other people? Uh, have shame, have shame. On the day of Qiyamah, it says in Hadith, Allah will summon people. Allah will say to them, Allah will cover him with his veil, veil of forgiveness and mercy. Allah will remind him, because the report's already been prepared. Uh, all the good and all the wrong you've done is all being prepared. On the day of Qiyamah, it will be presented. And a man will see and say, مَالِ هَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا Nothing major, minor, it's all here. What's this? So it will all be there. Allah will say to him, have a read. Iqra kitabak. Have a read. Uh, judge for yourself. Allah will say, you did this? He can't deny it. He'll say, yeah, ya Allah, I did. With shame. You did this, this, this. Allah will count and then man will think he's doomed now. That's it. Allah has mentioned everything. I've been, I've, been, uh, I've been picked for everything. I've got no hope in hell now. And then when Allah will see the man is beginning to despair, lose all hope, Allah will say to him, don't worry. For every sin you've committed, I'll change it for a good deed. Go on. Whatever you've committed, whatever's been mentioned, I'll give you reward for it. And the Prophet ﷺ said then, the man, when seeing the mercy of Allah, he will say, Ya Allah, there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> ya Allah, you haven't even mentioned many of the most of my sins yet. Uh, Allah will cover him. Allah will say, I covered over you in your worldly life, I have covered over you today. So when Allah will cover you over you on the day of Qiyamah as well, why are you boasting about your sins here? Uh, seek forgiveness from Allah. So I was saying, Adam Islam said to his son, Oh son, you're asking me about that Prophet. Huh? That Prophet was so special, huh? his Ummah will be so special. And on the day of Qiyamah, when people will turn up, nobody know Isa Islam will direct people to Rasulullah. And people will come, Ya Rasulullah, please put in a word for Allah in the court of Allah for us to get things sorted, get things moving. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he won't make an excuse, he will say, Ana laha, ana laha, I'm, yeah, I'm ready. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I will put my head down in sajda, and glorify Allah, and praise Him in such a way, Allah will inspire me, and I will praise Allah in a manner, and even I wouldn't have praised Allah in my life before. Uh, Rasulullah's name, Muhammad, Muhammad means the one Allah has praised the most, and Ahmad means the one who has praised Allah the most. No one has praised Allah in the manner Rasulullah has praised Allah. And when Rasulullah would pray, you know, mashallah, uh, when people, when they pray, if the Imam Sahib decides to make the ruku sajda slightly long, Maulana Sahib, please, yaar. We gotta go to work, you know. Uh, tomorrow gotta go to work. Uh, Juma, you know, people start staring at the clocks. If I go over five minutes in my masjid on a Friday, I see clocks flashing. <laughs> a watch is flashing. People from the back rows. Maulana, <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Uh, Rasulullah would say so long prayers, his feet would swell at night. Uh, and mashallah. And Sahaba would say, Ya Rasulullah, why do you worship so much when Allah has already forgiven whatever? The Prophet ﷺ used to say, Afala akuna abdan shakura. Uh, that's Allah's fazl and mercy. Shouldn't I be grateful to Allah? Uh, shouldn't I be grateful to Allah? And after praying to Allah in this manner, Rasulullah would say, Ya Allah, Allahumma la uhsi thana'an alayk, anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Ya Allah, I can't praise you as you ought to be praised. You are as you have praised yourself. Uh, no, one, no one praised Allah in the manner Rasulullah praised Allah. And in his du'as, Allahu Akbar, Maulana Anwar Shah Kashmiri rahmatullahi was a grand muhaddis of recent times. One of the greatest muhaddis of recent times. Allahu Akbar. And he used to say, and he was Shaykh al in Darul Ulum Deoband for many years. Allah had given him a photographic memory. 
What he would read 20 years, 30 years, no problem. Uh, not a word, not a, not a vowel would go missing. So once Mufti Muhammad Shafi Sahib Rahmatullah, he was the chief Mufti of Pakistan many years ago, passed away. The father of Maulana Taqi Usmani, who's a renowned world scholar. And uh, his father, Mufti Muhammad Shafi Sahib, while he was studying in Darul Ulum Deoband, uh, he, he, ha- he needed some reference. So he went to Maulana Anur Shah Kashmiri and he said to him, Hazrat, I need to look, I need to look up where this is, this passage or this phrase. Hazrat said, go to so-and-so place, look in the so-and-so shelf on the right or the left or wherever, pick up the books, it's there, and look on so-and-so page on the right or the left, uh, so many lines down, that's where it says. Oh. Mufti Sahib said, Hazrat, when did you read this book? Perhaps recently, I said, no, I read about 20 years ago. <laughs> about 20 years ago. Uh, he used to say, if there was no other dalil for the nabuvat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there's plenty. Uh, Rasulullah's du'as, his humility, the way he would supplicate to Allah, that is so special uh, that a man, when you see how Rasulullah used to supplicate to Allah, no other than a true prophet and servant of Allah can supplicate in this way. Uh, Hazur's humbleness, tawadu, uh, many people don't know nothing, uh, they have very little surface knowledge, uh, when they say they don't know nothing, uh, two negatives make a positive. Uh, they think they know plenty. Uh, they, they think, I, I often call the Mufti Min Al Muft. Uh, you know, Mufti Min Al Muft means one is a Mufti, study 10 years, mashallah, Darul Ulum, wherever, studying Quran, Hadith, Fiqh, mashallah, Usul, everything. Now he's been given permission to give fatwa. Another guy, he doesn't know anything, can't recite Fatiha properly, but he'll give you a fatwa. Uh, I call the Mufti Min Al Muft, uh, freestyle Muftis. MashaAllah, they'll give you fat about everything. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are so humble to Allah in his prayers. And well, there's one very special dua which Rasulullah has taught. And when a person is anxious, parishan is when you're anxious, you feel depressed, and you recite this dua, and this dua is mentioned in many books of hadith. The Prophet said, Allah will change your anxiety into relief. Allah will change the state of your fear or depression into a state of happiness. Try reading it sometimes. Uh, the, the, the dua is very wonderful. Dua says, Allahumma, O oh oh, oh Allah, inni abduk, I'm your servant. Wabnu amatik, uh, my father is your servant. Wabnu abdik, wabnu amatik. I'm your servant, my father is your servant, my mother is your servant. In other words, as they say, Ya Allah, ham to nasli tere gulam hai. Ya Allah, main tera naukar, main tere, ha, meri maa teri naukar, mera pyo tera naukar. Those who know Punjabi. Babullah Shah Rahmatullah was a saintly man. He used to live in Qasur for the Pakistanis and those who understand Urdu. Uh, there's a small town near Lahore. It's called Qasur. Qasur in Urdu means a fault. So he said, main Qasuri, meri zaad Qasuri, main randa vich Qasur de. He goes, I am at fault and I am at fault by, by nature. Because I live in Qasur, I live in a place full of faults. Uh, the Prophet said, Al insanu murakkabu min al khatai wa nisyan. A man is made of faults. We all sin, we all make mistakes all the time. So don't beat around the bush with Allah. Uh, just acknowledge your sins. Uh, Rasulullah said, Whenever anyone is anxious, you, you read this to Allahumma inni abduk wabnu amatik wabnu amatik. Uh, wabnu abdik wabnu amatik. I'm your servant, my father is your servant, my mother is your servant. Nasiyati biyadik. Ya Allah, my forehead is in your control. Uh, you know what he means? Uh, people here, mashallah, they have cars. Mashallah, other nice things. Other people in other parts of the world, they have to make do with animals. Uh, donkeys and other animals, mashallah. And what a man with animals, if he's holding the animal with, uh, with his hand from the hair on the head, then you can pull, then the animal doesn't try to escape. Or in some places they put rains. You know what rains are? Uh, one is the rain, water which trickles down. Another is rain which the king, he rains over people. Another is a rain which you put in the nostrils of a donkey or a horse. Uh, that rain. And uh, then you can control the donkey or the horse as, or the animal as you like. You pull whichever way you want. So the man, he says, he's making himself humble. Ya Allah, nasiyati biyadik, as though my reins are in your control. Ya Allah, I don't have things my way. It's you who has things his way. 
Nasiyati biyadik madin fiya hukmuk. Whatever you decide in my case, Ya Allah, that's what will happen. Adlun fiya qadauk. Uh, whatever you decide in my case, Ya Allah, you are Adil will be based on justice. Allah doesn't wrong anyone. One of Allah's names, Adil Muqsit, the just one. Uh, whatever Allah decides, you know, many times people say, Pata nahi kaun sa guna ho gaya, hum say, yaar, ye ke din What we don't know, what we've done wrong to deserve these hardships. But what have you done right? Uh, people think it, it's Allah's fuzzle, Allah doesn't punish us every time we do something wrong. Otherwise Allah can. Uh, it's Allah's fuzzle, mercy of Rasulullah, it's barakah of Rasulullah. Rasulullah is rahmat. Uh, otherwise, b- before Rasulullah, uh, when people went wrong, uh, you know what Allah used to do? Allah destroyed the nations. And uh, nowadays, subhanallah, uh, recently, just this week, they were discussing to pass a bill in the parliament. You know what the bill is about? <coughs> One of the latest bills. Anybody keep up to, the, up to date with the news? Uh, to allow gay marriages. Uh, to legalize it. Uh, legalize gray ma- gay marriages. Gray marriages. Uh, gay marriages. Allahu Akbar. Many years ago, we had an interfaith meeting in our masjid. Some Christians, a priest from the church down the road brought some of his community to our masjid. We started talking. He said, he asked me, are you married? I said, yeah, alhamdulillah. Have you got any kids? I said, yeah, alhamdulillah, 10. <laughs> and he said, and I said, are you married? He said, nah, I'm gay. <laughs> priest! He said, nah, I'm gay, man. I live in church with my partner. Because if you have no shame from God, why have shame from the people? If you go on the BBC website, BBC, and you type in South African pastor. I might have said this here before. South African pastor. And it will tell you that in South Africa, HIV is big. is big. Five million people are HIV positive. So it's a big problem in South Africa. And this pastor, he came up with this solution. You know what a pastor is? Christian priest, Christian Molvi. <laughs> He came up with this solution to the HIV problem because people, if they find out you got AIDS, you got you HIV, people don't want to shake your hands or don't want to meet you, greet you, whatever. So people felt resented, unwanted. So he said, "Yeah, I've got a solution. The solution is <coughs> let's make Jesus gay as well. <laughs> the Christians they love Jesus. So if Jesus is gay, then no problem. Then everybody will accept all the gays." So you can imagine the reaction it caused. Many Christians were horrified, others say, yeah, well done. That's the way, let's make Jesus gay. Astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Uh, so this priest, he said, I'm gay. Allahu Akbar. And that's the, and that's the latest bill. And uh, they want to pass now to legalize gay marriages. In many parts of the world, it's already legal. Um, in fact, many, many years ago, this is going back about 30 years. Uh, this was a front page news in one of the tabloids in one of the countries in Europe. And one man, man, performed his civil marriage with a dog. This was front page news. And then, so and so marries Mr. Dog. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. When I was in, this, this is again going about 30 years ago, in America, this was front page news again. There was a young man, he claimed to be in love with his grandmother, and married his real grandmother. Real grandmother. His father was mad, furious. He goes, what do I call my son? Do I call him son or do I call him dad? (laughs) Because he's my son, but he's also now my mother's husband. So what do I call him? Do I call him son or do I call him dad? Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah prophesied this 1400 years ago. The Prophet said, (laughs) يَأْتِ عَلَىٰ أُمَّةِ كَمَا عَتَىٰ عَلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ حَذْوَ النَّالِ بِالنَّالِ my ummah will follow in the footsteps of Bani Israel so much so like a shoe is a total reflection of the other. And the Prophet said, Hatta in kana minhum man ata ummahu ala niyatan. If anybody humiliated, shame, disgraced himself openly with his mother, lakana fi ummati man yasna'u dhalik. They will definitely, again, those who know Arabic, they will know. Lakana. There will definitely be such a man in my ummah who will shame himself in the same way. 
Allahu Akbar. And the Prophet said that 1400 years ago, how many of you probably heard of the Austrian man who fathered seven, eight kids from his own daughter, locked her up under the cellar, yeah? You didn't know? Ask some brothers, they will tell you. If, uh, I think about two years ago, this was again on the BBC website, I was checking the news, and this Australian couple, father and son had got separated, a father and daughter. Many, many years later, 20, 30 years later, uh, they became in touch with one another, and they fell in love. Daughter married the father. This was on BBC website as well, Allahu Akbar. When people used to do such things, Allah used to punish the nations, destroy them. And Lut al-Islam's nations, uh, his nation became gay. Allah punished them the most three ways. Previous nations, one adab. Nu al-Islam's nation, Allah sent one adab, Allah drowned them. Other nations, Allah sent an angel to scream and their hearts burst. Lut al-Islam's nation, Allah sent Jibreel, pick them up, topple them, upside down. And then when they, when they were taken up, uh, the angels screamed in the heavens and their hearts and liver burst. Uh, everyone had a brain hemorrhage. And they sent down, upside down, not enough. Allah showered them with rocks. Allah showered them with rocks. Uh, now it's common, mashallah. In France, there was a brother, Allahu Akbar. What can you say? That's such times of fitter and fasad. Uh, they're building a masjid and parish for gay Muslims. Uh, the building a masjid. Uh, did, did you hear the news on? You you heard about it, yeah? The guy went to, again to South Africa, uh, because over there nobody will perform the nikah, so they decided to go to South Africa. They got Maulana to do the nikah, <laughs> bless them as well. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And this is what barakah of Rasulullah. Allah is not punishing us. Allah is not changing people's faces. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa made a special dua once. Uh, he made a very long sajda. Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, specially long, extraordinary long sajda. What's the matter? The Prophet said, I made three duas to Allah. Ya Rasulullah, oh, special duas. Yeah, very special duas. First one, I made dua. Ya Allah, don't impose a calamity, adab upon my nation, which will destroy them all. Allah accepted it. So Allah is not going to punish this ummah in the manner Allah used to punish previous nations because of the dua of Rasulullah, rahmatul lil alameen. Then he said, Ya Allah, don't impose an enemy upon my ummah who will wipe them out. Uh, previous nations, many a people, uh, they massacred them. Uh, there hasn't been such a massacre in this ummah. There never will be barakat of the dua of Rasulullah, rahmatul lil alameen. Allah accepted. There were many times people got very close to overpowering the Muslims, but no one has been able to, no one will ever be able to wipe out all the Muslims. Dua of Rasulullah. In fact, Allah promised Rasulullah, Allah promised him, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Oh my beloved Prophet, as long as you are amongst them, I will not punish them. Thus the mere presence of Rasulullah was a shield for the ummah uh, from the adab of Allah that Allah will not punish them. Uh, when the wind would blow slightly faster, Rasulullah would rush to the masjid, put his head down in sajda, Ya Allah, have you not said you will not punish my ummah as long as I'm alive? Ya Allah, I'm still alive. Don't punish my ummah. Uh, don't punish my ummah. And then Allah said, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ مُسْتَغْفِرُونَ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ وَمُسْتَغْفِرُونَ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ uh, Allah will not punish them as long as they keep seeking forgiveness from Allah. Uh, the azabs of Allah are coming because we don't seek forgiveness. When Allah wants to send an azab, and Allah sees there are three types of people. Uh, one is those who frequent the masajid. Uh, people who come to the masjid. So next time a jamaat comes to your door, don't throw them away. Come to because they are holding back adab of Allah. They come to the masjid, they bring people to the masjid. And so when Allah sees there are people who frequent the masjid, Allah doesn't punish that locality. When Allah sees there are people who love each other for the sake of Allah, loving each other, Allahu Akbar, not hating each other. Nowadays, people hate each other so much, Oh, you kafir, mushrik. Uh, unless you're one of us, you're a kafir. 
You're a kafir. Astaghfirullah. The Prophet says, إِذَا قَالَ الرَّجُلُ لِيَخِيَ يَا كَافِرْ فَقَدْ بَاءَ بِهَا أَحَدُهُمَا When a Muslim calls another Muslim, his brother, he should treat him like a brother, he should address him like a brother, but instead he's calling him a kafir. Or simply because he doesn't see eye to eye with him. Simply because he doesn't attend his same halaqa as him. The Prophet said, فَقَدْ بَاءَ بِهَا أَحَدُهُمَا it becomes binding on at least one of them. The person you've called kafir, if he is a kafir, well and good, okay. If not, then the kufr is coming, he's doing a U-turn, bouncing back straight at you. There is a danger, if you call people kafir wrongly, when you die, sorry, you are going to die like a kafir. Uh, it's not easy calling other people kafir, very, very severe. Some people came, to, somebody came to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. Well, you might say, well, what's this got to do with Sirat? This is to do with Sirat. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us to respect one another, love one another, not hate one another. Somebody came to Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah and said, Shaykh, there's a man, he testifies without seeing. He hasn't seen, but he says, I'm a witness. How can he be a witness to something he hasn't seen? He prays Salah, but he doesn't make Ruku and Sajda. He eats dead meat. Allah says in the Quran, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَ Dead meat is haram. He runs away from the rahmat of Allah. And he loves fitna. وَالْفِتْنَ تُوَشَدُّ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ So what do you think about him? What's your fatwa? What's your fatwa? Any mufti min al-mufti? You ask a modern mufti min al-mufti, he'll go, oh man, he, that guy is a proper kafir. Proper kafir, Imam Sahib Sahib Rahimahullah. He wasn't a mufti min al-mufti, he was Imam al-a'imma. Uh, Imam Shafi Rahimahullah, he was no ordinary man himself. Imam Shafi Rahimahullah, he said, An-nasu kulluhum ayalu abi hanifa fil fiqh. When it comes to understanding deen, understanding. People just know words and phrases, they don't know what it means. Uh, understanding, understanding Allah gives to those, hadith in Bukhari, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا When Allah wants to bless people, Allah gives them understanding of deen. فَقِيهٌ وَاحِدْ أَشَدُّ عَلَى الشَّيْطَانِ مِنْ أَلْفِ عَابِدٍ One faqih who understands deen properly, is more severe upon shaitan than a thousand worshippers. Uh, Imam Shafi Ramahullah was a mighty faqih. And you know what Imam Shafi said about Imam Abu Hanifa? He said, when he comes to fiqh, understanding of deen, the whole humanity is like children in front of Abu Hanifa. Rahimahullah. Uh, such a man. <laughs> Abu Hanifa didn't know, man. <laughs> Abu Hanifa didn't know. Who was Abu? Abu Hanifa only knew five hadiths. And if someone is very kind to him, they'll say, oh, Abu Hanifa only knew 17 hadiths. That's being really kind to Imam Sahib. Uh, they forget to add the rest. Uh, that five hadiths he learned directly from Sahaba. Uh, this is what they say. Five hadiths or 17 hadiths Imam Sahib rahimahullah heard directly from Sahaba. And people walking around with a Bukhari under their armpits. Oh, Abu Hanifa only knew five hadiths. Well, as like one of our elders used to say, uh, thank Allah he only knew five. Because he knew five, he was able to deduce hundreds of thousands of Masail, and people weren't able to face up to him for hundreds of years. If he had known more, you wouldn't have been able to open your mouth for another thousand years. Allahu Akbar. Imam Shafi Ramahullah said, when it comes to understanding of deen, all the people are like children in front of Imam Abu Hanifa Ramahullah. So any mufti min al mufti, there's plenty about today, they will say, oh, he's a kafir, he's a proper kafir, and if you don't say he's a kafir, you're a kafir. And many people say that. And people say, Abu Ashraf Ali Tanwi, rahmatullah alayhi, who wrote almost a thousand books. Thousand books, he was a mujaddid of the 14th century. People like Mufti Shafi Sahib, Rahimahullah, Qari Muhammad Tayyib Sahib, and many people perhaps even heard these names. But people who are familiar uh, with the religious scholars of the Indian subcontinent, they'll know Mufti Muhammad Shafi Sahib, Rahmatullah Alayhi, Mufti Adam, the Grand Mufti of Pakistan, uh, for many, many years, and the father of Mawlana Taqi Usmani, and he's renowned throughout the world. They've given him the title Shaykh al-Islam. Uh, he's a renowned world scholar. His father, he was a student of Mawlana Ashraf Ali Thanwi Rahmatullah And he had hundreds like him. 
of his children. Oh, oh my, Ashraf Ali Thani was a kafir. And if you don't say he's a kafir, you're a kafir. Astaghfirullah. And this is how cheap kufr has become now. People th- uh, uh, splashing kufr around everywhere. But Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmanullah said, no, he's a proper Muslim. And don't you dare say anything against him. What do you mean? Yeah, when you say he testifies without witness, he testifies, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. He hasn't seen Allah, he hasn't seen Rasulullah, but don't you all testify that Allah is to be worshipped and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger of Allah? When you say he prays, no ruku, sajda, yeah, yeah, after prayer he attends janaza as well. Do you make ruku and sajda and janaza? No. Uh, no. He eats that, yeah, when he catches fish he dies, he's halal, he doesn't make zibh. Uh, he runs from the rahmat of Allah, when, he, when it rains, you're gonna stand around, you, every one of you will run. He loves fitna, yeah, who doesn't love the fitna? Inna ma'amwalukum wa auladukum fitna. Your wealth and your aulad is fitna. Who doesn't like his wealth and who doesn't like his children? Everyone loves them. Uh, so they are a test for you. So Imam Sahib was Imam Sahib, rahimahullah. Anyway, on the day of Qiyamat, people will turn up, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet said, I will glorify Allah in a manner even I wouldn't have glorified Allah. As, far, as long as Allah will want. And Allah will say, Irfa ra'saka ya Muhammad. Raise your head. Sal tu'ta. Ask. Ask whatever you want. You will be given. And Rasulullah will say, Ya Allah, have mercy upon the people. Ya Allah, let their affairs begin. Make decisions. Uh, ya Allah, let them be. In other words, those who need to go to Jannah, Ya Allah, send them. Those who need to go to Jahannam, send them. Ya Allah, let their affairs begin. Allahu Akbar. And then affairs will begin. Rasulullah, one of his titles, finally inshallah, I know your brothers have been waiting. One of Rasulullah's title, just as his title, Rahmatul Lil Alameen, who's given him that title? Allah. Khatamun Nabiyyin, Allah's given him the title. Uh, one of another title of Rasulullah, Shafiul Mudnibin. And the one who will intercede on the day of Qiyamah. You know what intercession means? He will go to Allah, put in a word. Ya Allah, have mercy. Uh, people will be lining up to give hisab. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will pass by the queue. As Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, on the day of Qiyamah, if we want to find you, where shall we find you? There'll be so many people. How do we come to you? How will we be able to meet you? The Prophet said, if you want to look for me, I'll look for me on three places. I will wait for people on the halls. Uh, such a severe day. Everybody will be thirsty, sweating. People drenched in their own sweat. And uh, you, you know, hot day you want a cool drink. Allah has given Rasulullah a special pond. Uh, Kawthar, the Prophet said, Inni faratukum al I'll wait for you by the pond. And when people want a drink, I'll give them a drink. And then the Prophet said, I'll wait for the people by Mizan. You know what Mizan is? Well, your deeds will be weighed. Uh, some people, they, their deeds might be... The good deeds might be lighter, the sins are more. Rasulullah will wait by the mizan to intercede, put in a word, Ya Allah, have mercy upon him. He tried, although not good enough, he could have tried better, but he did the little that he could, Ya Allah, forgive him. Uh, Rasulullah will intercede by the mizan. And then the Prophet said, look for me on Sirat, on the bridge which will be laid across Jahannam. You think it's easy getting into Jannah? Uh, It's not easy. You have to go over Jahannam. وَإِمِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا You all have to cross it. Uh, it's not easy getting into Jannat. Rasulullah will wait by the bridge just in case any Muslim is struggling to get across the bridge. So he can give him a helping hand. Allahu Akbar. Rahmatul lil alameen. And the Prophet ﷺ will pass by people waiting in the queue. <coughs> ya Allah, he's waiting in the queue. Ya Allah, he tried. Let him go, Ya Allah. Allah will say, alright, let him go. A man will be having his deeds weighed and his now his sins have dropped down and his good deeds, hardly anything there. Rasulullah will say, Ya Allah, please. Ya Allah, you are Arhamur Rahimin, Khairul Ghafirin, have mercy upon him. Do you think Allah will say no to Rasulullah? Allah won't say no to Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then other people will be in Jahannam. They will be going to Jahannam. The Prophet Sallallahu will say to the angels, wait. Ya Allah, please, have a mercy upon them. Don't let them go to Jahannam, Ya Allah. They believe in you. And they used to read my kalima. Allah will say, okay. 
Allah will order the angels redirect them. <coughs> and they were going that way, do a diversion. <laughs> MashaAllah. On the right, they were going to the left, down, under, go up. Uh, so some people will be in Jannah. Uh, but they'll be low class, third class. <laughs> uh, and there's no third class in Jannah anyway. Everything is first class. Uh, but then there'll be special levels. There are special levels in Jannah. Even to get to just somewhere in, put, get your foot in Jannah, MashaAllah. Even that is Alhamdulillah, Jazakumullah. Uh, but they'll be low down. The beloved Prophet of Allah will say, Ya Allah, they tried. They've got here, Ya Allah. But you appreciate their good deeds. Ya Allah, elevate their status. Uh, and they deserve a low down. You know, like MashaAllah, one bedroom flat, people long to have a house of their own. Uh, with a garden at the back. Uh, perhaps driveway at the front. Uh, it's, it's difficult enough, bad enough getting parking in South <laughs> Uh, MashaAllah, they own everything, uh, their own little yard, uh, they will have their own little yard, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will intercede for them, Ya Allah, give them something better. Allah will give them something better. Uh, so Rasulullah's shafaat, uh, love for Rasulullah is a requisite of iman. No one can be a believer unless and until he loves Rasulullah more than what he loves his parents, his children, and even himself. May Allah grant us. Uh, that sincere, true, deep love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.